Hi guys, welcome to Michelle's Cozy Kitchen where I show you how to make Caribbean dishes. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you want to learn how to make these delicious dishes. As promised, in this video I'll be making another of my favorite dishes, stewed saltfish with coconut dumplings and steamed vegetables. This is a popular dish on the Caribbean island of Nevis, especially on Good Friday. Because the saltfish is very salt, I soak it overnight or at least 10 hours before cooking in fresh water. This is to remove most of the salt. Then in about 4 cups of water, I will boil it for about 15 minutes. Once that is done, I will remove it from the water and set it aside to cool. Once cool, I will remove the skin. There are some tiny inedible scales on the skin that has to be removed. Also, I will remove the bones. This saltfish is bone in saltfish, but you can get boneless saltfish at your grocery store. Saltfish is a dish you can eat with just about anything. I can recall growing up, we ate it with bakes, dumplings, mashed bananas, and fungi. To remove the skin, I am using a spoon because I find that it works better. However, you can use a knife or a fork. And with my fingers, I am stripping the saltfish into smaller pieces so that there aren't any big chunks of saltfish in my dish. Dumpling and saltfish is a very popular dish in the Caribbean and we eat it all year round. I am now going to prepare the seasoning for the dish. I am using a half of an onion, about three cloves of garlic, half of a red and green pepper, and um, scallions. I am going to dice all of these as shown in the video. In the Caribbean, we pride ourselves on making delicious dishes. And do you know what the key to those dishes are? Their seasoning. And so that's why every time I cook, I try to incorporate as much seasonings as I can in my dishes. Here's the finished product. Now I'm ready for the next stage of cooking, which is to saute these vegetables. So I'm going to place a pan over medium heat and add about two tablespoons of cooking oil. Once the oil is heated, I'm going to add the vegetables. Please ensure that the oil is not too hot when adding the vegetables or they'll get burnt. So keep that in mind. After adding the vegetables or seasoning to the pan, I'm going to stir them to incorporate the flavors and then allow them to saute for a few minutes until they become tender. While the vegetables saute, be sure to keep an eye on them to prevent them from burning. Now to this mixture, I am going to add about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Tomato paste is a great ingredient for stews because it acts as a thickening agent for the sauce. I love to use tomato paste in all of my stews. It could be stewed mutton or goat, fish, sawfish, or my favorite brown stewed chicken, which you can check out my video that pops up at the end of this one. Because it not only thickens the sauce, but it also gives the dish a great flavor. Once I have added the tomato paste, I am going to stir it around to evenly distribute it throughout all of the ingredients. This will simmer with the rest of the ingredients and then to that, the saltfish would be added. Guys, saltfish is a very versatile dish. I've eaten it with so many things. It pairs well with bakes, fungi or cornmeal as we call it in the Caribbean and dumplings. We even use saltfish in a dish we call pilau or cook up, which is a combination of chicken, rice and saltfish all cooked in the same pot and this is a delicious dish. After adding the saltfish to the pan, I'm going to take a fork and break up any large chunks of saltfish into smaller pieces. Then I'm going to mix all the ingredients together so that they can incorporate
To this, I'm going to add about two tablespoons of paprika, a dash of cayenne pepper, some Padilla's complete seasoning, and about a cup of water. Then I'm going to stir everything together and allow it to cook for 15 to 20 minutes covered. However, during the time it's cooking, I may need to add more water, so I will be constantly checking on it and stirring it to ensure that it has enough water. Once the cooking process is completed, remove it from the heat and set it aside. I am now going to make coconut dumplings. Guys, coconut dumplings and saltfish go so well together. It is a delicious dish that you have to try. Here I have a coconut that I got from my local supermarket. On the outside is a very hard shell which has to be cracked open. Inside there is a solid white meat that has to be removed from the shell. I have cracked the coconut into a few pieces because it's easier for me to remove the white solid meat. And that is what we need to make the dumplings. I am going to use a knife and I am going to slowly place it in between the shell and the white meat and rock it back and forth until the meat becomes loose as shown in the video and you'll do this until all the coconut is removed from the shell please be careful when handling the knife if you don't have the time to go through this process you can just pick up your shredded coconut at the local supermarket i'm now going to grate a few pieces of the coconut using my grater However, you can use a food processor if you have one at home. I am using the smaller side of the grater because you need fine shredded uh, coconut to make the dumplings. For a mixing bowl, I'm going to add the shredded coconut flour and a half stick of butter. Then I'm going to take my fingers and blend the mixture together until it resembles breadcrumbs. To that, I'm going to add about one cup of water and make the dough. Be careful with the amount of water that you add. You don't want to add too much or too little. So you have to be careful. If the dough is too sticky, then add a bit more flour. If it's too dry, then you need to add a bit more water. Did you know that saltfish and coconut dumplings are part of the national dish of St. Kitts and Nevis? Yes, it is. It is actually stewed saltfish, spicy plantains, coconut dumplings, and seasoned breadfruit. After making the dough, it should look like this. It's not too sticky, not too dry, and the sides of the bowl should be clean. To make the dumplings, I'm going to separate the dough into pieces about the size of a golf ball or a little bigger. I am adding flour here because the dough is a bit sticky. Then I'm going to roll the dough between my the palms of my hand and until it forms a ball. After that, I'm going to take my fingers and flatten it a bit and set it aside. I'm going to do this until the dough is finished. And here you have it. These are the pieces of dough that have been rolled to make the dumplings. Now I am going to add them to a boiling pot of water. You may have realized that I didn't add any salt to the dough. I normally add salt to the water and this prevents me from over salting the dumplings. Once I've finished salting the pot, I will carefully place the dumplings in the hot water. So you have to be careful about this part guys. You do not want to get burned. Stir the dumplings to prevent them from sticking to the bottom of the pot. Then cook uncovered or slightly covered for about 20 minutes. You'll know they're done when they start floating in the water. I am going to add some steamed vegetables to the dish which includes string beans, broccoli and carrots. I simply place a pan over medium heat, add some butter, grate in some garlic and add the carrots first because they take the longest to cook. Then I add the string beans and the broccoli and allow them to cook for a few minutes until tender. And this is the finished product. You have coconut dumplings, stewed sawfish, and steamed vegetables. This dish is one of my favorites. It's not only colorful, but also flavorful. I can eat it at any time. So guys, there you have it. From my cozy kitchen to yours, thanks for viewing. The recipe for this dish is below. 
and don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel if you want to learn how to cook these delicious caribbean dishes